Hi everyone, this is Brittany from Teach Me ABA, powered by Piles and Associates, and I am so excited to be back. Happy New Year! I hope that you had a wonderful holiday, um, whatever it may be that you were celebrating with your family, and that you all are healthy and you all are safe. So we're going to continue with our series on the task list five, and we're going through each one of the sections. Right now we're going to be wrapping up. This is going to be one of the last two videos on section C. Uh, this upcoming video is going to be C-10, which is graphing data to communicate relative quantitative relations. Let's get into it. Okay, so if you've been following section C, we've been talking about how to observe, how to measure, and how to collect your important data. Now we're gonna talk about how we use graphs and how you should be interpreting them based on that quantitative data. Now graphs are a really important tool for interpreting this data. Within the field of behavior analysis, graphs really help us show the results of our work. That's important, right? We're trying to improve the lives of all of these individuals. Cooper, Heron, and Heward list seven benefits from graphic display and visual analysis of behavioral data. And I'm going to go through each of them coming up. So the first one is plotting each measure of behavior soon after your observation. What does this give us? This visual display gives clinicians the immediate data that they need for that target behavior. So this means that they can make changes immediately based on whatever that client may need. Pop quiz, which characteristic of ABA does this follow? Have your answers below and I'll give you the answer. If you answered analytic, then you are correct. Way to go. The next benefit is direct and continued contact with the data allows a clinician to know the variations in the client's behavior as they occur. What do I mean by this? I mean that this can indicate that it may be time to alter something um, and it may be time to ensure that longer periods aren't passing without adjusting anything within the client's intervention or your research. Graphs allow practitioners or researchers to gauge what the next step is going to be in the intervention or their research. This is a aid for the interpretation of results. When one criteria is first met, then the practitioner or the researcher can move on to a new phase. Graphs allow those who are using it to determine the significance of changes in the behavior across time. Because obviously it's not gonna be something that's quick, it's gonna take maybe days, months, and that's really, really important that we see this change over time. Graphs also encourage independent judgment and interpretation from those who are visually interpreting the results. Now, this is important because people that see the graphs can see for themselves the significant changes that may happen, and it doesn't need someone else to interpret it for them, right? When you can see a graph, you can tell high means this, low means that, and then you can make your own judgment based off of this information that you have in front of you. Up next, graphs provide feedback to those whose behavior is being depicted or being seen. So let's say that you have a caregiver or a family member that's trying to see the changes that you are making within their child's intervention. Well, they want to see that as well, and it provides them with that quick feedback to, oh, Timmy's doing great, or you know what, Timmy might need a little bit of extra help, and here's where. Last but certainly not least, graphs allow for clear descriptions of results to a wide variety of people that are responsible for the overall impact to the lives and the communities that we serve. For example, we have government officials that may look at our graphs. We have school district officials that will look at our graphs as well. Um, funding sources need to see these and they need to interpret it and know that we are making a change in the lives of that individual. In applied behavior analysis, there are graphic displays that are most often used by researchers, and we're gonna discuss those up next. So, we're gonna talk about line graphs, and these are two-dimensional areas that form at an intersection to make two perpendicular lines. Now, from those lines, we have two axes that are formed, um, and each axis represents a quantifiable dimension of behavior. Now the y-axis, it usually indicates a scoring of the dependent variable in relation to a specific point in time 
or an environmental condition known as also the independent variable. Now, our x-axis is typically indicating the amount of time that has passed. For example, this is typically noted as sessions or the dates of the intervention when it was presented. It's important to note that the x-axis is also called the abisca. Now, this is important because it may show up on your exam. Okay, hint, hint. The x-axis can also show the different values of the independent variable. Now, the vertical line, known as the y-axis, will represent the range in values of the dependent variable, which is quantifiable. So, in other words, we're talking about the dimension of that particular behavior. This is typically a percentage of that target behavior or a rate within ABA. Note that your y-axis is called the ordinate. Now again, hint hint, this might show up on your exam. Now we have an example right here, so that way it really helps for you to get a graphic interpretation of everything I've said. Now what's really important about a line graph is that you want to use it uh, when you want your data to communicate the relationship between how much time has passed and your target behavior. So a bar graph, which is also called a histogram, is a graph that typically is used to summarize the performance of one individual or a group of individuals during different conditions, rather than talking about the responses over time like a line graph. Now, this kind of graphic display is showing kind of a mean or a median score of the target behavior um, or the person um, or the group uh, within each condition that we're looking at. So you want to use a bar graph to summarize and compare large, large amounts of data that are easily to read. So don't use this if you have just a ton of data all at once that you need to fill in. Let's say you have more than 60 data points, that's gonna be really hard to read. And depending on the condition that you are implementing all of this, you're gonna to wanna to note it a little bit easier. Up next is a cumulative record. Now, this was created by B.F. Skinner himself, um, and the cumulative record represents a participant's occurrence um, across time. So once again, we're looking at behaviors across time. Now, this graph is made um, by adding the number of responses during each observation period, and then the total responses is recorded for all of the previous observation periods. So this is gonna be a longer looking graph. Um, the y-axis represents the total number of responses since the start of data collection. And then your x-axis is going to be the time passed since the start of data collection. You want to use a cumulative record when you want to show a rate of progress within that individual that is working towards maybe a new goal or a new skill. So you definitely don't wanna do this for a skill or a goal that this person has already met. This isn't just specifically for a new skill. That's really important to note. Okay, up next is a scatter plot. Now this is a graph that displays relative distribution of individual measures of a data set with respect to variables that are shown on the X and Y axis. Basically, the X axis depicts the dependent variable and your Y axis depicts the independent variable. A scatter plot is best used for displaying how much change within the value of a variable is shown on one axis and how it correlates to the changes in the value of the other axis. Okay, up next is a standard acceleration chart. Now this displays a linear measure of frequency change across time, where the frequency multiplies or it divides per unit of time. So this one's gonna look very different from our other graphs. This graph is used for displaying the standard means of charting and interpreting how the frequency of behavior changes over time. So the data is based off of a ratio chart with six um, cycles of 10. So on the vertical axis, they can accommodate the responses varying between minutes to hours to days. So it really is a vast amount of information and it's really important to just use this um, for behaviors that you want to see over time. Now, I know I've given you a lot of information and I'm covering almost the bare minimum, but really, really vital information when it comes to graphic display and how you're supposed to communicate all of these very relative quantitative relations. If you have any questions, please go ahead and list them below. You can also send us a direct message. We're always here to help. Again, this is Teach Me ABA. Please like, subscribe, and share. Have a great day. Do, do, do.